Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris, the Ancient Scholar, and today I'd just like to talk a uh, kind of ad lib, if you will, about something that um, has come up in, in some conversations and some things that I've seen, and that is uh, on uh, on Mercury. Um, when we talk about Mercury, the, the element, um, and Mercury toxicity or Mercury poisoning, uh, it's interesting that uh, you know that most people, I think, identify with the fact in, in, in many instances, that, that mercury is, is very toxic, um, there, there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, mercury toxicity. So I, I thought I'd just uh, spend a couple minutes and uh, just kind of ad-lib and discuss it. So when we talk about mercury, there, there, are really, there are really three forms of mercury that we deal with. There is what we call the elemental form. This is the form that we find mercury... Uh, where it hasn't I- interacted with anything, there aren't any chemical bonds, it's, it's not an ion, um, it's in its uncharged elemental state. Um, you know, it's a heavy, it's a heavy uh, liquid metallic uh, substance, and uh, it's one of the few uh, metals that can exist as a liquid at, at, at Normalish conditions. Uh, really, I think it's only only one that you find consistently in a, in, in a liquid form um, at room temperature or under standard temperature and pressure conditions or STP conditions. Now, um, this uh, particular form of mercury, the elemental form, is not particularly toxic. Um, it can be. It's particularly if you're around a large amount of it, and some of it can get vaporized, and you can inhale the mercury vapors. Um, but in general, a little bit of metallic mercury is not uh, as concerning as perhaps it could be. Um, in fact, uh, elemental mercury is kind of inert in a way, and um, the, the, the reasoning behind that or what, what goes into that is actually kind of complex. It's not something I'm going to go into a whole lot of detail in a day, but it um, has to do with something known as the, the lanthanide contraction, and there are um, relativistic effects that, that occur with the electrons because mercury is a, a pretty large atom in terms of how many electrons it has. It has a lot of electrons, and as the the electrons get further away from the nucleus, the electrons have more and more uh, energy, uh, kinetic energy. And so you might imagine that they are moving much faster. Their velocity is, is very, very high the further out you go. And, and we see this not only in mercury, but, but, but larger you know, atoms, uh, your transition metals. And um, th- this, this um, increase in velocity, of course, has some impact in that... Um, uh, when you look at hydrogen atoms, we don't really care as much about the, the velocity of the electron. It's not really a big deal. Um, but the faster and faster these, these electrons go, the closer that they approach to the speed of light. And then you have um, special relativity that comes into play, and you have relativistic effects that occur, um, particularly in um, the amount of mass um, or what we call relativistic mass. I know some people would take issue with me using that term, but you know what? I, everybody knows what the hell I'm talking about, so I'm going to use it. I, I, and you know, and you can whatever whatever term you want to use for that. But you you have you have that, and you also have contraction of atomic orbitals, um, specifically like six s orbitals. S orbitals can have have more penetration or probability density anyway. They're less screened. Um, they experience less screening, so they can really contract in. So you have this this mercury atom that has these these valence electrons that are six s, and uh, what happens is be, due to the relativistic attraction, those those six s electrons can can kind of contract in, penetrate in, and they can have they, there's more electrostatic influence with the nucleus, and so they're held in perhaps a bit more a bit more tightly, quote unquote, if you will, than than you might expect, and that kind of makes Mercury doesn't have a whole lot of chemical reactivity if you don't do anything to it. Um, you know, it's just there, and you're not interacting with it particularly. Um, it's not going to do much, and and that's actually why mercury can be a liquid because the mercury atoms don't experience a whole lot of of attraction, if you will. 
Um, they're a lot like your, your inert gases, you know, helium and, and neon, and that those gases don't experience um, any significant, uh, significant, significant forces um, between them. You know, a lot of gases don't, but there you go. Um, of course, there, are, there certainly are some forces in mercury, and if you cool mercury down, um, uh, it'll solidify in, into a solid at, at pretty, pretty reasonable temp temperatures that are pretty easy to, uh, to get to under normal conditions. Okay, so that's, that's elemental mercury. The, the toxicities associated with elemental mercury aren't, you know, horrible. There, there are some toxicities, and certainly repeated exposure and whatnot can be kind of problematic. The real problem when it comes to mercury toxicity, the real problems come into the two other forms. So you have um, a ionic or what we call a, um, a non-organic ionic form of mercury. Um, and this is mercury that has been ionized, has lost electrons, so it's positively charged. And then it is associated with a negatively charged ion, uh, like mercuric uh, chloride or, or something like that. Um, these inorganic mercury salts. Um, the inorganic mercury salts are much more toxic than the, um, the elemental form of mercury. In fact, the mercury salts, their primary toxicity tends to be more gastrointestinal. So you have gas, uh, inflammation and damage to your gastric mucosa, and you can have you know, severe uh, gastritis and gastroenteritis and ulcerations and bleeding, and it can cause some pretty severe gastrointestinal distress. The third form of mercury is perhaps the most concerning or the most toxic, if you will, and these are what we call the organic, uh, organic mercury um, types of molecules. And this is where we attach um, organic molecules, or organic molecules are uh, covalently bound to mercury. Uh, for example, methylmercury, which is a methyl group, a CH3 atom that is attached to a mercury atom, or um, dimethylmercury, two methyl groups attached to mercury. Um, the organomercuric compounds, or the organic mercury compounds, are highly toxic. There uh, is significant toxicity associated with these guys, and because you have um, these methyl groups in a lot of cases, uh, the methyl groups are really good at penetrating lipid membranes, particularly so it can cross the blood-brain barrier. And now you have a bunch of mercury uh, in a highly reactive state, might I add, crossing the blood-brain barrier, penetrating into the brain. And, of course, mercury um, uh, interacts with sulfur. Um, so you have sulfhydryl bonds um, in your central nervous system that mercury can amalgamate, uh, act, interact, interact with, and Interestingly enough, uh, when we find mercury in nature, uh, when, we're, when we uh, mine mercury, uh, mercury comes in a, um, a mercury combined with sulfur um, kind of substance, kind of a bright, colorful substance known as cinnabar, or um, you have mercury and sulfur, and you actually have to process that to, to get the mercury out. Totally, totally a little, little aside there, and there's some really good history about um, you know, ancient Greece and Rome and the, uh, the mercury mines where they would mine the cinnabar. And as you might imagine, um, that probably wasn't the highest thing on your to-do list. Uh, certainly um, when you're applying for a job, um, you know, a lot of people that did that apparently didn't have a whole lot of say. And obviously there were lots of problems because you're being exposed to massive amounts of, of mercury in this, the cinnabar as they're mining it. Uh, totally different story there. Okay, so the organomercuric compounds, highly toxic, um, highly toxic to the central nervous system. Um, there have been some notable cases. There was a, a disaster that happened in uh, Japan, uh, in a little bay there, a little bay of Japan, and um, mercury got, uh, elemental mercury got dumped out into the ocean. That elemental mercury was processed by um, small organisms that were in the ocean, and those small organisms metabolized the mercury into a, its organic form, uh, methyl mercury. And then the fishermen would pull fish and creatures out of the water that had been 
I had very high levels of methylmercury, and then several people, uh, ended up, many, many people actually ended up uh, having methylmercury poisoning and they, severe neurological, devastating neurological consequences. It was a really, really bad deal. Um, we had a researcher, actually, at Duke University. Um, this is back in the late 90s. Um, she was really a, a well-known um, heavy metal chemist, I believe, working with like uh, transition metals, lanthanides, actinides. I, I think I think she was into heavy metals. And anyway, she had um, uh, was working with dimethylmercury, and they used to use dimethylmercury to calibrate certain certain equipment because um, I don't know exactly what she was calib like maybe a mass spec or something like that. Um, where where that you. The, it gave pretty reliable, pretty reliable results, and it was a really good uh, control standard. So I think she was calibrating an instrument, like mass spec, or um, some sort of analytical um, process that she was doing. And she uh, was using a pipette, I believe, and and ended up getting a little drop, a uh, tiny little drop of methyl mercury on her. She was wearing gloves at the time. And um, ended up cleaning it up, and uh, it wasn't a big deal. And then a couple months later, she started having these serious neurological manifestations. And, and, and a few months after that, she ended up uh, dying um, a pretty pretty terrible death from this methylmercury, which is a little drop. Um, and, of course, that the, there were big changes, and we don't... Uh, to my knowledge, we're not using uh, dimethylmercury to calibrate instruments anymore. And uh, we found out that it was dimethylmercury was able to penetrate a lot of different protective um, gloves and materials. So there you have it. Okay, so quick, down and dirty. Um, you have the three different types of mercury. You have elemental, you have your inorganic salts, and then your organic uh, mercury compounds. And uh, of, of the three, the metallic form tends to be significantly less toxic. There are lots of reports out there of people drinking mercury, injecting mercury into themselves, and going on and surviving and, and, and doing okay with, without long-term consequences. Um, when it comes to the uh, salts, the inorganic salts, you typically have a gastrointestinal, is a gastrointestinal syndrome, um, severe gastrointestinal syndrome in some cases, and then with the um, organic mercury, it tends to be devastating neurological, um, devastating neurological consequences. And of course, uh, mercury can have teratogenic effects. So um, obviously, it can be very harmful to the, the fetus, a developing fetus. Okay, so it's just a quick down and dirty thing I wanted to throw out there real quick about about mercury. Um, and mercury toxicity, and you know nothing real de in depth or detailed today. Just kind of a kind of a quick BS session, if you will. Okay, guys. As always, thanks for hanging in there.